Hello, you're watching Studio Ken. Make sure you don't miss any episode of Studio Ken by subscribing to the YouTube channel. To subscribe, search for Studio Ken on YouTube, click subscribe on the bottom right of your screen and set a reminder. You can also watch Studio Ken on Diamond TV on Wednesday at 18.30 and on Saturday at 19 hours. Studio Ken, the home of Kennedy Gondwe on YouTube. The name Mwambalutembe may not mean much to Zambians of a certain age, but it's a name that will forever be associated with one of the bleakest periods in Zambian political history. On the 30th of June 1990, Luchembe announced on national radio that the army had taken over power from President Kenneth Kaunda. The coup attempt was put down within hours and Luchembe was arrested. Although the former Zambia Army Lieutenant's coup attempt failed, many believe it greatly weakened Kaunda's position and led to the restoration of multi-party democracy in Zambia. Hi, this is James Chamanga. You're watching Studio Kane. Don't forget to subscribe. Mwamba Luchembe, it's great to have you on Studio Ken. Thank you very much, Mr. Gondwe. You were 30 years old when you attempted to take over power. What on earth were you thinking about? Didn't you think it was going to cost your life? Uh, I wouldn't say that because, you know, when you take such a role, there are two things involved. It's either you succeed or you fail. If you succeed, well and good. If you fail, you should take the inevitable. Well and good in what sense? Because at the end of the day, you are potentially going to put this country on fire. Put your own family on fire. Uh, I do not think so, because there was a general discontent about uh, the, way things, the way the affairs of the country were being run. And... Uh, we could hear complaints from the military itself, from the civilians, and the only problem which was there was who to ignite the flame. So do you think you are the right person to have ignited the flame? Why ignite a flame that would put the country on fire? You are using the word flame. I wouldn't say that. Uh, uh, it was that bad because, you know, the, the general atmosphere in the country, people wanted change, but they were being throttled. Nobody could talk. And, you know, uh, when you incubate passing a wound, the wound definitely will be very, very painful. You need to squeeze it for it to come out. That is what is Dr. Kaunda used to do. From the beginning, Dr. Kaunda was all right. But as the time went by, I think he, he got drunk with power. And uh, he turned into a dictator. Is it something that you did with all your heart or it was under the influence of alcohol as it were? There was no alcohol in the country that time. There was dusk to dawn curfew uh, because of the food riots. So there was no alcohol anywhere nearer, not even in military cantonments. Weren't you under the influence of any substance? No, nothing. Absolutely nothing. So tell me about how this coup was planned and how you executed everything. Well, the opportunity came, uh, you know, I was with the 5th Battalion of the Zambia Regiment, which is based about 500 kilometers away from the capital city, Lusaka. So, during the food riots, the police failed to contain the situation. Therefore, the president requested that the army uh, takes over from the police to put down the food riots. 
So it was my unit which was called to do the same. So we flew all the way from Kaoma to Lusaka. The food riots stopped. Uh, Dr. Kaunda, in his own wisdom, decided to close the University of Zambia, thinking that uh, probably it was the University of Zambia students who were fueling the, uh, the confusion. So we rounded up uh, the University of Zambia around 23 hours. Then in the morning, that's when now the police moved in. There were about uh, 33 United Bus of Zambia uh, uh, buses to take University of Zambia students to wherever they came from, and uh, about 11 Mulungus traveler buses, which uh, was a subsidiary of Zambia Consolidated uh, Copper Mines, to ensure that uh, these students are taken to their various uh, places of origin. They were nowhere near uh, uh, Lusaka. So when we finished, we went back to Arakan Barracks and uh, went to the club to go and relax. And the discussion started. And uh, the general atmosphere was that actually, uh, even though Dr. Kaunda had increased the millimeter, I think it was about uh, three quarter or so, from 15 quarter to, from 13 quarter to 16 quarter. Although in the military, I was eating from the mess, I was not buying any millimeter, but it did not entail that even my relatives were eating from the mess. You talk about your relatives there. Let me just cut in. Your relatives indeed were not eating from the mess, but the repercussions would have meant a lot more misery, don't you think? Uh, no, it wouldn't have been because even our taking over did not mean to be in power in perpetuity. We just wanted to bring multi-party politics back into the country the way it used to be immediately after independence. But the problem with coups is that there's no stop to it. Once they start, that becomes the culture. Look at Mali, for instance. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, it depends on how you plan uh, the coup. But otherwise, we are not supposed to have been in power for even more than six months. We are supposed to have handed over to the civilians. We just wanted them to make political parties probably three, not uh, the way it is now where we have got a proliferation of political parties. Some of them, you know, uh, I call them family parties. They are just there on the paper, but uh, they don't make any impact. Easier said than done. We've seen people that have uh, assumed power through military coups. They promise the kind of things we're talking about, and yet they stay in power in perpetuity. More than 27 years, the 27 years that Dr. Kenneth Kaunda was in power. In our, in our case, it was not supposed to be the case. We had agreed that uh, the transition was only supposed to be for not more than six months. When you that look back... It. You've had 30 years to reflect. Do you yes. regret what you did? I do not regret at all. Would you do it again? <laughs> I wouldn't say I would do it because what we wanted that time has been achieved. We are in multi-party politics. Although our colleagues who are in power now you see, they are trying to take us backwards and it's really painful because we fought for multi-party politics. But our comrades who are in power now, who are the patriotic front, are using the police and uh, uh, the public order act, you see, to throttle uh, whatever we had achieved. Uh, 
during the 1990 uh, period. Do you accept that removing governments uh, by force in any civilized society is wrong, no matter your grievances? Do you accept that? Yes, it is wrong. So there is no need for any military coup with the powers that be. We remove them through exactly the, ballot the box. point that I'm making. Coups yes, are wrong, whether they are elections next year or in the next ten years or twenty years. Coups are wrong. Wouldn't you have applied the same principle in 1990? You know, I wouldn't say coups are wrong. You know, uh, but they bring African, about stability. Af African leaders are very difficult to remove. That's where the problem lies. I don't know, they get so drunk with power such that the only way you can remove them and restore democracy again is through military coups. But I'm not saying uh, it should happen here in Zambia, but those who are ruling should know that actually what is happening in other countries, they should take a leaf and refrain from suppressing the people. Let them rule according to what the people want. Those African leaders I refer to include soldiers who've taken over power by force. Look at Gambia and what happened with Yajame. They come with messages exactly like yours. Put them in power, no difference with those that are elected by the ballot. Well, it depends on who takes over power. But otherwise, others are genuine. They act according to what they planned. So how did your coup then fail? Well, uh, you know, I was tricked by a certain colonel who came and said, uh, uh, what, what was needed had been done. If I could go, and I thought according to our plans, there had been some changes. That's how this kennel came in. But unfortunately, he took me to the police. And uh, equally, the person he was trying to protect was Dr. Kaunda. He equally retired him. And he died a very a miserable uh, man. Have you met Dr. Kaunda from the time that uh, you attempted the coup? We have been meeting casually, but not, uh, not formally. Uh, for instance, my wife goes to St. Paul's UCZ Church. I'm a Catholic. When I drive my wife and my family to St. Paul's Church, we do meet and greet. This same person that you attempted to overthrow uh, only jailed you for a month. In other countries, you could have been dead. And yet here you are, you don't have any regrets. Don't you think it was actually lenient on you? Well, what I would say is that he, he had no choice. Because even when I was being led to the police station, people were celebrating. You know, civilians don't like military coups. But in that particular time, people were celebrating which means they also wanted change. And he must have watched or been informed by the, his intelligence service that he actually said, I think your time is up. That's how he had to... Uh, Shouldn't you be thankful to him for not executing you, as we've seen in other countries where people have been killed, those that attempted coups, or being jailed for life? You only spent a month in prison. I wouldn't say I would be thankful to him, but I was, I was thankful to God because I'm sure uh, the coup was probably the way God planned it, that this man should be told in no uncertain terms that he should change for the better. But not at the expense of possibly killing people. That's not the God we know. Uh, 
Well, you know, God used me as a vessel and he knew how to avert any catastrophe thereafter. Otherwise, I was only used as a vessel by the Lord so that uh, the man changes. Let me read to you what you said on radio as you were taking over the country. Yes, please. This is what you said. Following the rise in the price of foodstuffs, which are the basic needs for Zambians, the army has taken over in Zambia with effect from 3.30 a.m. Zambian time. All Zambians and foreigners are free to remain in the country. Announcing the military coup is Lieutenant Mwambaluchembe. Did you write this? I didn't write it. It just came from my head. I had not written it anywhere. And what was going on in your head as you were saying the kind of things that have been recorded here? It was exactly what we had planned. You know, we didn't want to close airports for aircrafts to land. You know, there are some aircrafts which used to pass through Zambia just for refueling purposes. And if you told them not to land, it would have caused a lot of accidents. They were allowed to come, land, but not to take off. So had you succeeded, who was going to be the president of the country in that transition period that you are referring to? Is it you? No. I was not supposed to have been uh, the one. Who was supposed to? Uh, there was another group which was in Kabwe, which was supposed to have uh, taken General Tembo from Mukoveko. Which General where, Tembo is this? General Christian Tembo. The late. The late. The former vice president. The former vice president, where I had been uh, imprisoned. You know, he was also implicated in the 1990, uh, 1986 coup, uh, which was also as a result of uh, food riots. I may so wish to take you back. You know, the first coup attempt it was in the early 70s by the then uh, Mr. Nalumino Mundia and Mr. Chipango. The second one involved uh, the late Mr. Edward Jack Shamwana, Mr. Ballantyne Shula Musakanya, uh, P.S. Anfield. Then, 1980, uh, no, 1986, it involved General Christian Tembo. Then 1990, that's what involved me. Studio Ken cannot verify your claims that uh, General Tembo was planned to be president in that transitional period. But the one thing that is factual and clear, according to what you say, though, is that you were lured by this gentleman and taken to the police station. What happened thereafter? I was taken to Central Police. What happened at Central Police? Uh, I was uh, put in a female cell. They evacuated all the the inmates who were in a female cell and created space for me where I was keep, kept uh, uh, alone. I think I was there for about uh, a week or so before I was taken to a two-story building in Chamba Valley, which had just been gazetted for such a purpose. From Chamba Valley, we flew to Kaoma, where they, they searched my office and my residence. Then uh, as we were coming, we landed in Mumbai, it was night time, and uh, the pilot switched off the, the uh, what do you call the headsets for others. It was only him and I. Then he said, we are not going to fly to Lusaka. I would tell them that we have got no night uh, uh, navigation facilities for the helicopter. So we are sleeping in Mumbai. 
So when we stopped in Mumbwa, they organized uh, transport to drive me back to Chamba Valley. And uh, apparently when I was being taken to these other places by air, I never moved in uh, these trucks they call for, for prisoners and whatever. Uh, the, ju the junior uh, police officers, they used to tell me where we were, we were going, even though I was being blindfolded to go to the city airport and so on, but they were telling me. Where did where this we... gentleman who lured you find you? Where did he get you from? At ZNBC. And where were the other people that you had planned? Them initially, with? initially, they had sent a, a bus full of uh, soldiers to come and uh, uh, apprehend us, those of us who were at ZNPC. All right? How many were you? Uh, there was a platoon, which was uh, 32 soldiers, plus me as an officer, 33. So when they sent this bus full of uh, soldiers, I spoke to the soldiers, what I was saying made sense, and they joined us. So at the strength increase. So when you went to Chamba Valley, what happened there? I was also locked up in a, in a single room without a radio, no newspaper. All what I was given was a Bible, that's all. Were you tortured? Feet. Well, the torture was there. What kind of torture? Uh, you can check there. There. Blacking out my teeth using a pair of pliers, thinking I was going to review the people I was with. But I told them I was just alone. And what else happened other than your teeth being plucked out using a pliers? Then the other sad part was uh, I was taken to four headquarters where they took me to the conference room, told me to undress, threw my clothes through the window onto the car park and told me to go and pick them up. So when I was going downstairs, there were some police officers who were following, following me with the, their rifles saying, Nicho Funta, Nicho Funta. Meaning you are mad? Meaning I was mad, so that uh, we don't attract uh, any attention. And apparently, there was a rumor when I was in tension that I had uh, died. And a mini riot started until someone had to assure the nation that no, I was actually alive. Someone would say what they did to you was actually lenient because people like you are supposed to be executed. What would you say? I would say there was uh, some rescue operation which we had organized somewhere. That was not going to happen. Had I been killed, Dr. Kaunda wouldn't have been alive now. Have the two of you forgiven each other? I don't know about him, but in my case, I've forgiven him from the bottom of my heart. And um, you may so wish to know that uh, when I was at Central Police in the female cell, there was a police officer who came and uh, through a pigeon hole, he gave me a newspaper, which was a, a Zambia Daily Mail. And uh, the headline was, uh, Luchembe's Kuhox, where Mr. Alexander Gray Zulu, who was the number two at that time, uh, de facto uh, vice president as at that time, he was secretary general of the party. So he was the second to Dr. Kaunda. He's the one actually who helped matters because in that newspaper, he said uh, the coup was done by one indisciplined soldier 
was just drunk and had no support. So, being number two man, he, he spoke with authority. He really helped me because drunkenness and disorderly was a fineable offense. It was five quarter fine and rebased. So, when this police officer gave me, I read it. Then he said, whatever happens to you, continue saying you were drunk. Do not mention anybody because it's not going to help any matters. I've been a prosecutor for the past 17 years. Mr. Grey Zulu had already judged you that you were drunk. So continue saying that you were drunk. But in actual fact, you weren't drunk. No, I wasn't. Like I said, Studio Ken is not able to verify what you claim as uh, having been part of the plan that uh, General Tembo was supposed to be the president of the country. But when you look back, do you look at yourself as someone who helped in the restoration of multi-party democracy? Yes. I should say I 90% contributed to the change and brought multi-party politics in Zambia. Do you consider yourself as a former president, at least for the hours that the coup was active? I wouldn't say I consider myself as president, but uh, being the only one who is known and having never reviewed anybody's name, people call me president, and uh, I accept that. Do you pride in that? <laughs> I, uh, well, in a way, since I was, uh, I'm the only one who is known, I think it is fine. But that's a president who has never inaugurated. That's a president who doesn't enjoy presidential benefits. There are a lot of presidents in Africa who have come into power through that way. And I can give examples. Kagame came in through the same way. But he's still the president of Rwanda. He's uh, president of Rwanda. Uh, uh, just our neighbor here, Congo. Kabila came in through the same way. He and he ruled for more than 10 years. He was, uh, he was, but with you, it, he was was only, it was only ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, whether it was ours or not, uh, all the same. You say you take pride in people that refer to you as a former president, and you accept that. It's precisely that that makes people think that you're delusional, because anyone can claim to be president or accept such a calling from the people. But being president is a different ball game altogether. Well, being the only one who is known having done that in Zambia and uh, succeeded to the extent of going to the radio station and announcing, mind you, during uh, Dr. Kaunda's period, his intelligence service was so uh, good. I believe it was the best in Africa. And uh, usually most of the coup attempts, uh, people involved were being nabbed in the planning stages, in the infancy of their planning. But me, it even went to the extent of announcing it was an achievement because uh, Captain Solo went to ZMBC in 1997. He also announced that he had taken over power. Uh, well, I wouldn't talk about uh, the late Captain uh, Stephen Lungu. But uh, what I should say is that Dr. Kaunda's intelligence was far much stronger than uh, the intelligence which is uh, there now, uh, which is full of witch hunting and so on. But uh, Dr. Kaunda's intelligence was quite precise. They never, 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 you know, reported on anything which was incorrect. Whereas as at now, I don't know, the, the, the recruitment of the intelligence officers, I don't know if it has been diluted by lack of unemployment and so on. So the people who join there mostly are just dependents and so on. Even their training is so shallow, uh, such that uh, to, cling on, to cling on to, to their profession, 
they have got to pedalize against the others. That's Are you yourself employed at the moment? No, I'm not. So I've how ne do I've never I've never worked for anybody since that time. So what keeps you going? Well, by by the grace of God, you know, I get a monthly pension of uh, it was just increased recently to about uh, I think five hundred kwacha or so. And uh, as you are coming, you saw my wife outside selling vegetables and tomatoes. So it keeps me going. Do you think you actually deserve that money or perhaps you deserve even more? I think I deserve better. It's just unfortunate that uh, in spite of all these people have been uh, beneficiaries of my actions and uh, uh, go into state house. They have completely forgotten about me. And, uh, so how do you think you should be appreciated? Well, somehow, like you rightly said, the coups are not supposed to be uh, uh, entertained anywhere in the world. But at least mine brought in a change. And the successful presidents who have been there have, have been beneficiaries of my actions. Because if they were against it, they should have brought back Dr. Kaunda to continue ruling. But since they accepted what I did, that's how they have been ruling Zambia's presidents to date. After Dr. Kaunda retired you, uh, Dr. Chiluba took over, obviously, in 1991. And then he promoted you to the rank of captain. Yes, please. Do you think in his mind he was thanking you for what you had done a year earlier? Yes, that's what he, he actually did. And he acknowledged that in the book that he wrote that, uh, about uh, democracy in Zambia. Only that I don't have uh, a, a, a book, that book now. Somebody borrowed it. But there's somewhere where Dr. Chiluba said uh, uh, I contributed greatly. Immediately you were promoted, he then retired you. Why yes. do you think he did that? Well, <laughs> I wouldn't know uh, why he did that. Uh, maybe he, he thought probably going back to the system, I may have the same ideas and so on. But I was also happy because I did not want again to go, to go and continue, you know, working with the people, uh, some of whom betrayed me. So it was going to mean any simple, probably any simple mistake they will capitalize on me saying he probably did this, that's why he's doing that. So to me, I think I was happy about my retirement. The only thing I liked was uh, uh, when Dr. Kaunda fired me, I lost my benefits. I was only given back pension contribution in its form and leave days in its form. Uh, uh, the money in its form, but when do, uh, Dr. Chiluba promoted me and retired me, whatever I was given that time was written off against the state, and uh, the monies were reinstated, and I got a, a retirement package, though it wasn't much as at that time. When you sit down with your children, with your wife, what conversations go on? in the family, in as far as the 1990 failed coup attempt is concerned? Well, it's what under the bridge. We don't even talk about it. We but those that can remember within the family, like your wife, is she proud of what you did? <laughs> I don't know. She can say that for herself. How would you like this country to in remember? In fact, like, like, uh, like my children, 
when they come from school, that's when they just ask, ah, so daddy, at one time you were a president or so. Then that's when I just briefly just try to explain to them. But they don't know much in detail. And for your information, I think in civic education, it's there. They are taught in schools in grade nine uh, civics about the same 1990 coup when it comes to the change of uh, uh, democracy, in, uh, the uh, bringing about of democracy in Zambia. And at one time, some uh, schoolboy told me that he had seen me in the Lusaka Museum. I did not know what he meant. And I told him that I'd never been to the museum. He said, no, I saw you there. I didn't know what he was talking about until I personally went there. And uh, on the political side, that's where I saw uh, my picture. Uh, that uh, I brought change in Zambian uh, politics. I went to the museum in Livingstone. It is also there. I mean in uh, Mazabuka and the one in uh, in Imbala. That's when I said, well, I think what I did was, uh, was great. Other than what is recorded in these museums that we talk about, how do you think this country should remember Mwambalu Chambe? Ah. It's very difficult to say. I think uh, the, the people who are in power should appreciate that actually I'm the one who has made them be wherever they are. And they should have somehow consider appreciating me in a way. Not when I'm dead and they start naming a road after me. You know, it does not say, make sense. There are Mitsubishi trucks that are named after you. Most Zambians refer to them as Mwamba Luchembe. How did that come about? Uh, you see, those trucks were actually bought to repatriate all offers from urban areas to, the, uh, to wherever they came from, to the rural areas. And if one found employment, that's when now you show the authorities that you have found employment in an urban area or a college or what, then you come back. They were meant to repatriate all offers from urban areas to, to, wherever, to our places of origin. Now, is that a legitimate claim? Is it, it, it recorded it, anywhere? It is very legitimate. So they were bought by ZCCM for the Zambian government to carry out that exercise. And apparently, in Zambia, at that time we did not have transport. We are just limp, limping IFA trucks there and then. So it was during the, the food riots operation that uh, we requested for those trucks to be released so that we use them for our logistics. And uh, after my coup, Dr. Kaunda, uh, you know, cancelled uh, that exercise and instead uh, distributed those vehicles to uh, military uh, units as well as some government uh, departments. So that's how the soldiers nicknamed them Mwambalu uh, Chembe trucks. How does that make you feel when you see trucks that are named after you or known to be <laughs> Mwambalu Chembe's? Well, I feel good. At least I, I'm recognized by some people somewhere. And I've also, I also picked up some, um, I wanted to write something. Then when I checked behind, I found they have named some market after me in, uh, I think it's somewhere in uh, George Compound. There's some Wambadu Chembe market. But do most people recognize you when you are walking on the road? The other time that I met you, no one seemed to quite know you and your history. Well, for those who are elderly, 
they know me. Unless these uh, small ones who are born uh, just recently, they are the ones who don't know me. But uh, most of the elderly, those who are there during that period, they do recognize that uh, I'm around. Although some people, again, they refer to me as the, the late Mwambalu Chembe, the late Mwambalu Chembe. Where that came from, I don't know. Because, uh, you know, I don't know how my death can be, can be hidden. Thank you very much for hosting us. Thank you very much. Hi, this is James Chamanga. You're watching Studio Kane. Don't forget to subscribe.